by singing our opening chant, God is my source. God is my source, God is my power, everything I need, so I give thanks for all my blessings, God gives me everything. Welcome to the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. We are so happy that you are here. Whether you are here in person, in Zoom land, or on Facebook, welcome. And for those of us that are here in person, please make sure that your cell phones are silent so that we may enjoy this service uninterrupted together. So, and let's together join in prayer. And just taking a couple moments to center ourselves it's in our consciousness in the glory of this day. The sun is shining and all is well in the world. No matter what circumstances are, we are all here as emissaries of God. God has created everything for us to guide us and give us perfect happiness and perfect life. God is that one source. God is the love energy, the, the love intelligence that fills the universe that fills our soul and our spirits with yearning to learn and to grow and curiosity and the reverence that we have for life itself. For it is truly a blessing to be here, to be aware and to be conscious, to be able to function and do God's bidding. For truly, we just take all our circumstances and create them to our own needs, always guided by the love and blessing of God, knowing that what we do affects our lives and the lives of others, that truly, we are here to be a blessing from God, delivering God's message through our actions, through service, through everything that we do. When we take a moment or two every day, every now and then during the day, just simply to pray and connect with God, our consciousness is automatically lift, our circumstances are lifted, and our life is lifted. And we can be that gift that God has created to go out and help the world. And I am so grateful for the teachings of this church. I am grateful for the ministers and practitioners, the board and the office and our wonderful technical staff and our musicians that are here to love and support us through this service. And I am grateful to be here myself, to be able to communicate with everyone who is here today. And knowing this is so for me, I know it is so for you. And I release this prayer into the mind of God it's already been made manifest before the request was made or the questions were asked. I let it go, I let it be, and together we simply say, Amen.
prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give me this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from error. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we get to sing. Surely the presence of love is in this place. I can feel its mighty power and its grace. There's a whole Please be seated. And now we get to meditate for about five minutes. We're going to do this silently. As soon as that stops. You may wish to repeat your favorite mantra to yourself. Something simple like, God is the love that I am. I am the love that God is.
When you know your heart contains more joy than sorrow And feeling down a place to rise above Then what's lost today is found tomorrow Oh, what's not to love not to love and when you know that fear makes you brave and doubt not what your soul's made of you find the strength when you're afraid to love what's not to love dark clouds of thunder brought me skies of blue oh it's no small wonder that this storm led straight to you Good morning. Thank you for being here. I'm so happy to have you with us. If you're in person or virtually here, we're glad we're together. So I'm going to talk about a story that um, was always very interesting to me as a kid from the Bible. I'm going to talk a little bit about Noah's Ark today. What kid does not love Noah's Ark? Think about it. What could be better than you build a great big house and you get two of every animal and you go sailing? I mean, doesn't that sound like a great thing to a kid, to be on a giant boat with two of every animal you could imagine? I love that story. I thought it was great. Now, of course, when I talk about the Bible, I think when we talk about the Bible and religious science, we see that all of the characters in the Bible exist within us. So Noah isn't about some guy. Noah is about us. Whether you are male or female, all of the characters in the Bible, I believe, exist within us. And I think the Bible is... Uh, 
a way to find our way back to God. So uh, the ark, what can I say about the ark? The ark could be considered a sanctuary, a holy abode, a vessel for preservation. It could also mean a body of light. So isn't that interesting? That Noah goes into a light body, a body of light, and that's what saves he and his family. So Noah's ark, I think, is that spiritual part or that spirit part of us built in the midst of the flood of error. What do I mean by the flood of error? Well, maybe you have felt like you've had a flood in your life. I know I certainly have. And what it might be is something like this, where you're working and you're running as fast as you can at work and you're still moderately behind. And there are some things happening at home. And, oh, I don't know, maybe your neighbor's pipe has burst a leak and it's somehow affecting you by coming into your kitchen, bathroom, and den. And, uh, you know, just like that, you know, a whole, like when you're just flooded, so much stuff is happening all at once to us. And we wonder, is this going to be what takes me down? That's when we have to know that we are Noah. We absolutely are Noah. And what we have to do, if Noah's ark is that spirit part of us built in the midst of error, then we build our ark on some scientific understanding of how principle works. That we know that God within us is a principle and a power and a presence. Right? So if we have some understanding of this wisdom, of this power, of this presence of God, so we can build our ark on lots of things. And this, of course, is what I want to talk to us about. That when we find ourselves in a flood, a flood of error conditions, and it seems to be coming at us from every direction, oh my God, what are we going to do? So we start with something simple. We build our ark with affirmations of spiritual truth, of what is the truth about us spiritually, not just random affirmations. See, here's the thing with affirmations, and this comes from Eric Butterworth in his wonderful book, Spiritual Economics. He says, we don't affirm things to make things true. Right? And I think that's probably what most of the world who is aware of affirmations does. They think they're going to affirm something, and somehow that's going to manipulate the law, and they're going to make something happen. I'm here to tell you this is not that. Okay, It's not. This is not that. We affirm something because it's already true in the mind of God. And by affirming it, it bursts forth into physical manifestation over time. All right, now, what else are we going to do to build our ark? Because the ark really is the metaphor for our consciousness, that when stuff is hitting the fan or the water's rising, you know, what we have to do is have an incredibly strong spiritual consciousness so we don't succumb to being at the effect of all these things that are happening out here around us. All right, so I would say, all right, so I'm going to affirm the spiritual truth that is already true about me, the truth that God created. I'm going to treat. I'm going to treat like mad. I'm going to treat multiple times every day. I'm going to meditate. I'm going to take that meditation seriously. I'm going to forgive everybody, including myself, again and again and again. One of my favorite things that Emma Curtis Hopkins says is, I forgive everyone and everything. Isn't that great? It's just so blanket. It just handles it. You know, I forgive everyone and everything. I'm going to practice gratitude like it's going out of style. I want to be grateful for everything, everything, everything. Because Now, this doesn't sound like maybe it's a big deal, but all of this, what this does is this is what's going to float our boat. This is what's going to lift our consciousness so we are not taken down by the error conditions around us. See, the Bible's giving us wisdom that's to be applied to our daily life, but I don't think it's really in the literal translation. You know, like I said, as a kid, I just loved this story of Noah's Ark and the flood. And I would always be fascinated when I would be out with my parents someplace and maybe we would go into a nice store or by a store window and I would see, because sometimes you see this, where somebody who's probably a woodworker or a great carpenter builds this fabulous ark and it's there in the store window and there's like a hundred different pair of animals that are all hand done, you know. And I was like, oh my God, I, as a kid, I wanted to be on that boat. I really did. I wanted to be in the boat. Um, so the story, if we just take a minute to consider the story, God is dismayed at the wickedness of the world. Okay? All right. And so what God does is God's decided to destroy everyone and everything in a great flood. 
Paul, now, now, first of all, so this clearly is a metaphor. I really don't think that God, God whose primary qualities are love and intelligence, sends us bad. You know, there, th that does not exist in divine consciousness. God only knows to give of God's self to each of us, and what God gives us is love and abundance and joy and all of the things that are aspects of God. All right, so God's, so people are, people are, not being good, okay? I mean, and not being good. What, is it, what do we mean by that? That just sounds so subjective, so relative. But wicked, all right? We'll go with the word wicked, wickedness. And so now God sees Noah as a just man, and he instructs Noah to build an ark. And, it, and this ark is going to be big enough that it's going to hold Noah, and it's going to hold his wife. It's going to hold his three sons. It's going to hold the three sons' wives, and it's going to have... Um, an extensive menagerie of every kind of animal. Now, of course, again, I say we're not taking this literally. Because, you know, people love to do this literally, and, and, and that's fine if that's your thing, but it's really not mine. So if I look at this from a metaphysical point of view, though, beyond the physical, there is another meaning for us. And the metaphysical is about how this story really relates to me personally, I think. So this is about cleansing. This is what I come up with, that this is a story about cleansing our consciousness, that what is in my consciousness that needs to be cleansed. So all thoughts, all beliefs, all habit patterns, all ways of being, reactions that are not conducive to, to our greater good, that's what's got to be eliminated, I think. And the second part is because we're going to be in the ark, what do I want to save? Or maybe a better way to ask is, who's going to go with me? You know, we were told that Noah was a just man, right? That Noah walked with God. Well, we walk with God, don't we? We're just people, absolutely. So, Noah, and again, the name Noah means to rest, to rest in God or to rest in the divine. So I like that. So identify I, what I want us to do is identify what you want to keep. Not everything's got to go, but if there's something especially relevant or important to you, and, and then once you know what you're going to keep, allow that great cleansing to take place. Now, personally, I feel like I have been doing this great cleansing for like two years, don't you? I mean, really, the last two years, I, I, I mean, I have to wrap my head around it some way, and so I think, okay. This has all been about cleansing. It's been about purging. It's been about releasing. It's been about clarifying what's important. This is Noah's Ark. We have been on Noah's Ark, and we didn't even know it. So we must now, I think, flood our minds with all of the good, inspiring, uh, all of the things that are loving to us. That's what we have to fill our mind with now. Anything that makes you feel good, and remember this, and, and anything that supports you in remembering the greater spiritual truth about yourself, you know, is what you want to flood your consciousness with. Anything that reminds you of your connection with God, anything that reminds you of your connection with good, uh, with other people. See, the ark spent months floating around, just floating and waiting and waiting and waiting for the waters to recede. I don't know about you. But in the last two years, I couldn't tell you how many times I said, well, the good thing is it can't get any worse. <laughs> what a maroon I was, huh? I mean, come on, it couldn't get any worse? I had no idea. I had absolutely no idea. So, so here we are. The ark is floating. The ark is floating. Know that it takes time, and it really does. It takes time to cleanse our consciousness of all that needs to be cleansed. And another way to say this is that most healing happens incrementally. I love those big dramatic healings, you know, where you treat and somebody gets up out of the bed and then they run a marathon. You know, but most healing doesn't happen like that, really. It just doesn't. Most healing happens incrementally because our consciousness changes a little, and it changes a little, and it changes a little, and then it's changed enough so that we see a demonstration. So how can there be so much to cleanse? So this is what I come up with. That we have our conscious thought. So this is the thought we're all thinking right now. This is the thoughts that we're aware of right now. And you might say with me, well, I think my conscious thought largely is pretty good and good for you. I hope it is. I hope that that's absolutely true. But then there is your subconscious thought. And Ernest Holmes teaches us that the subconscious is the seat of memory. Every thought you've ever thought is held in your subconscious mind. Everything that's ever been said to you, everything that's ever been done to you, all of your history, it's all in your subconscious mind. So 
it seems to me that there could be a few things there that could be tended to. And then, of course, there is the race thought around us, the thinking of the world that's always pressing in on us. You know? And so I always say that if you don't mind your own consciousness, there's a great big world out there that's more than willing to rush in and take charge of your thinking for you. The world will tell you what to think. And what I mean by that is if you don't take charge of your own mental spiritual household, you will find that you are having the same experiences other people in the world are having. And they may not be of the highest order. They may not be for your highest and greatest good. So we have to be the one to mind our own mind is how I look at it. And so this, this process also, I want to say, involves trust on our part. I hadn't thought about this much before, but I realized Noah knew very little of what was going on outside the ark, you know, while he and his family and the animals were all inside having a nice little sail, right? He didn't know a lot of what was going on outside. And I think this time, what occurs to me as I read the story, is that that's a very relevant piece to us. That when I am trying to build a strong mental spiritual household, I may not give a lot of attention to things going on outside. That may not be the priority for me right now. I think, you know, um, when we arrive in a period of cleansing, we have to trust that it is taking place even when we don't see it. You know, that I, I'm doing my work. I don't see the demonstration yet, but I know that something is happening in the infinite mind. How? How can that possibly be so? Because, you know, you can't uh, think thoughts of truth and speak words of truth and see images of healing and wholeness again and again and again and not have that ultimately outpicture as part of your experience. So when the scriptures say that Noah walked with God, that means that he had a high consciousness, I believe. You know, that Noah had a good consciousness. So, okay, I like that. So since Noah is the archetype of the individual soul, his ark is the body or the vehicle that makes the, the evolution of our soul possible. So because Noah earned status, uh, earned the status of um, being obedient and righteous before the Lord, the ark, the ark, which is um, a symbol of our causal body, the causal body is the storehouse for all of the permanent qualities of the individual soul, uh, is lifted up to manifest a higher consciousness, right? So this is about the preservation of our individuality, the, the part of us that is able to attain higher consciousness. I know for everybody, there's some part of us that's attached to the past and the way it used to be and this and that and all that kind of stuff. But think about this, that the flood is a pattern of being overwhelmed. How many times have I heard people say in recent months how overwhelmed they felt? You know, but, but, but here's the thing. By this flood, it could be a pattern of being overwhelmed by personal transformation and change. And yet somehow, become, we have the capacity to become a more enlightened individual because of the experiences of the floods that we go through. So know that the point of the journey is not the flood. The point of the journey is that on the other side of the flood, the greater expanded consciousness that you get to be, that's the gig, right? So flood or no flood, Noah symbolizes great faith. I think he symbolizes heightened consciousness and overcoming great difficulties. So. That's a pretty good model, isn't it? It's like, yeah, okay, if Noah can do it, I can do it. But know this, you don't have to go out and start picking up pallets off the side of the road and looking for pieces of wood to build an ark. The ark for us is our consciousness, our own mental, spiritual household. And I also thought about this, this was just something that occurred to me this time reading the story that I'd never got before, that the two by two, all of the animals, male and female, it's about balance, that what Noah had on the ark with him was perfect balance. You know, he, he wasn't too far one way, went too far the other way. It was just all about this balance of the yin and the yang, the male and the female within us all. So I like Noah. I, you know, I really do. I like Noah. That's the part of the story that I want to focus on today. And I think Noah is all of us. 
We build an ark so that we have the capacity to not be drowned by error conditions, to not feel like we are at the effect of stuff that's happening outside of us. Oh, it feels like it's happening to me. Mm -mm. Absolutely not. We pray, we meditate, we study, we serve, we tithe, we practice gratitude, we forgive, and our boat floats a little higher. Won't you join me when we pray? So let's turn our attention inward. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll take a moment to just be still together and remind ourselves that right here, the place whereon we stand is holy ground, that we are surrounded, we are filled with God's infinite, loving, intelligent spirit. In fact, the spirit of God within us is the most true, real thing about us. This is our spiritual connection with the something greater. And so knowing that we are connected with God, I also know that each and every one of us, we are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life, that we are all emanations of God consciousness, just like we're all rays of the sun or waves of the ocean. We are all part of God and connected with each other. So in this awareness, I speak the word for us that yes, absolutely, our consciousness is the ark. Our consciousness is the vessel that we make strong in spiritual truth and allows us to rise above conditions. We are not devastated by conditions. We are the individual consciousness that decides how conditions will have any effect, if any effect, in our life at all. So I know we are blessed by this awareness that we have a strong mental, spiritual household and that that which does not serve us cannot penetrate our thought atmosphere in any way, shape, or form. We include in our prayer today our family members and friends, our parents and children. Perhaps this is who we include in the ark with us, all of those we love and hold near and dear. And we surround them with a mantle of God's love and peace and healing, knowing that all is well right where they are. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in, where there is so much going on, where so many people are experiencing a flood of condition. We speak this word that the goodness of God, the love of God, the abundance of God is right where they are, that all needs are met, and that everyone is lifted above any seeming difficulty. We speak this word of peace in our world, so that all people everywhere might have peace in their minds and peace in their hearts, peace in their bodies and peace in their body of affairs. We bless our church, all churches everywhere, synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together today, that there is a raising up available for each and every one of us and we say yes to it. So with a full heart, I say, thank you, God. This is the truth. I release this word into law. And so it is. Together we all say, amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all. So blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed. All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. Give it up for the drummer. <laughs>
clap. It's okay. Don't be scared. us moving around. I hate to take my mask off. It keeps my nose warm. 
So we have a few lovely things going on here today. I'd like to let you know about. First of all, thank you, Jody, so very much for gifting us with your song, Enjoy Today. And you may get Jody's music at jodysiegel.com. That's J-O-D-I-S-I-E-G-E-L.com. And thank you so much for Sam and Karen for supporting us with music today. And thank you to our tech team and everyone here on Zoom and on Facebook who also supports us and makes these services possible. We have a lot going on at our church today. And there's ways that you may want to make donations. This supports us so that we may be able to continue to bring these services to you. You can call the office. That's the simplest way to do it at 818-762-7566 or go to nhc.org slash give and text or text the word give to 818-457-3419. And Prayer with a Practitioner is available immediately after service in person or on Zoom. So if you're on Facebook, just hop over to Zoom and someone who's waiting there to pray with you. Mark your calendars for Sunday, January 30th at 9.45 a.m. That's the day we will celebrate the 135th birthday of our Dean and Founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes. The service will be rich with insights, humor, the music of doc that Dr. Holmes loved, and some surprise special guests. And oh, there will be cake on the patio. <laughs> the Wednesday evening service this, this week will be with practitioner Liz Racy on January 19th. Meditation will begin at 6.50 p.m. and service at 7 o'clock p.m. Liz's topic this week is a tale of two prayers. And if you haven't heard her speak, do turn in because it's a real gift to yourself. She's an absolute treat to listen to. I just love it. So our youth church is open on Sundays for our 945 service, and we welcome youths of all ages. The uh, 2022 goal sheets are available on the patio and on our website. Please complete it, self-address it, and stamp it and return it to the goals box that's in the church, and they will be mailed back to you in December of 2022. Now, I did this for years and then I sort of slacked off for a little bit and I did it last year and got it this last December and I was just thrilled to get it. And it increases your odds of accomplishing your goals by 50%. And who doesn't want to stack the deck in our own favors? Come on. Okay. Now our quick start class is today with Dr. Mark Vieira. It starts at um, 12 o'clock. It's from 12 to 1.30. And this is a series of three freebie classes with Dr. Mark. And this only happens once a year. So I encourage you to take full advantage of it. This, um, when I started about 30 years ago at a different church, they didn't have these quick start classes. And when I transferred over here, I was able to do it. And I thought, what a wonderful review. This is what I'm looking for. This is what I know is going to enrich my life. And this is a place I can come and grow. And it's a wonderful opportunity. And our church website nhcrs.org is very user friendly. Now you may have guessed that I, I wasn't born in the technology age. I predated by many, many years, but I can even find my way around. You just click and it takes you right to the site. It's very simple. So that starts today at 12 o'clock. And the Circle of Healing is on Zoom today at 1 o'clock, and it's led by the wonderful practitioner Mary Catherine O'Hart, and I'm wearing her name badge today. <laughs> So please join me on Zoom. We're going to just be Zooming um, until it's safe for us to gather back here again in the church. And it's a lovely way to heal whatever has been bugging you. Any leftover experiences you want to get rid of from last year or any time at all, that we heal physically, mentally, emotionally uh, from lots of different ailments. So please join me at 1 o'clock today. And I'll be surrounded by wonderful healers that help in the healing process as well. And that information, again, is at the church website, nhcrs.org. And we will be feeding the homeless today, the Love and Kindness Ministry. Uh, we'll be doing it today at 1230. To support this ministry, please go to our website. And volunteers and donations are always welcome. Our bookstore will be open for 30 minutes after service today, and the lovely Gail Pelot will be there to help you. So please stop by and visit. Our Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services is a place where you can go and join and meet up with people we haven't seen for a while. And there's a Zoom meditation 
every morning, Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. And it's a lovely place just to simply come and it's a great way to start your day. All our events are um, to sign up for events for our weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. Again, go to nhc.org and the links will be available for you there. Let's stand and sing the peace song. Please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. Amen. Thank you. Okay, okay.